Hello, my name is Erin Larson, and I am new to the Gentle Somatic Yoga faculty. I am joining you today from my home studio here in Fayetteville, West Virginia. And this evening, I'm going to share with you my favorite sequence for pelvic mobility. So, if you can imagine the pelvis like a bowl, it is not exactly like a bowl, but it is made up of our two ilia. So if you put your hands on your hip bones here, this is what is known as the iliac crest. And if you take your fingers and you can palpate that bony protuberance, we call this the anterior spine, and you come all the way down, you'll hit your pubic bone or your pubic symphysis. And this joint right here does not have a lot of movement except in pregnant women who are about to give birth. If you take your hands back to your hip crest and with your thumbs and fingers palpate that posterior spine of the pelvis and imagine you were to follow your fingers almost right behind where the pubic bone is, a little bit higher, you're going to land on the sacrum. And if you walk your fingers out a little bit more, we call it distally, you're going to land on about the area of our sacroiliac joints. Sacro referring to the sacrum and ilio referring to the ilium. And these two joints are the posterior joints of the pelvis. And these two joints have a little bit more movement than the pubic symphysis. There's not a great deal of movement like most of our articular joints. In fact, the joints almost resemble more like Velcro. And for some people, it can feel really sticky. And because of this, we may experience pain around these joints or even pain that is referred into the lumbar spine. Myself, I was brought to yoga because of low back pain. And sometimes that back pain resurfaces, especially I've, I've been doing a lot of gardening, where I am doing repetitive movements to one side, like shoveling or splitting wood or raking leaves, all of which I do a lot because I have uh, some land here in West Virginia. And so I will feel pain and stiffness in either of my SI joints oftentimes. So I love to do this little sequence because it helps to create that freedom and mobility in my pelvis as well as strength. What I would love for you to have this evening is a block or if you have something like a meditation cushion, this one is a little uh, squished because I sit on it all the time, but it's quite firm with just a little bit of give. You can have something like this or a yoga block would work great. And you can take that prop tonight and just sit your pelvis up on it so that you feel your sit bones. If you take your hand and you just sit on your hands, you're gonna feel what's known as the ischial tuberosity. And these are the lower posterior and superior, meaning the bottom points of our pelvis. And if I bring this bowl back in for reference, in a nice neutral pelvis, we want this bowl slightly tipped forward. And so what we do with our cushion is we elevate right at our ischial tuberosities and allow the pelvis to feel as if it's slightly tipped forward. Like if there was water inside of that bowl, it would just be lapping right up against the front rim of that bowl. What you will also feel if you take one hand and just take the back of your hand to the lumbar spine, a gentle curve inward. Like the back of your hand, this gentle rounded back of the hand could nestle right there in the low back. When you have a good support of the pelvis and this neutral alignment, there will be ease in the shoulders. So for example, if I were to take away this prop, I'll turn to the side so you can see, and I'm just gonna bring my knees up, kind of assume what, many people experience when they sit is the pelvis is actually rocking back and then my shoulders round forward. And if I try to sit upright, it's quite challenging. But if I take that prop 
and I sit it under my pelvis, and I sit upright, you can see that my shoulder is more aligned right over my hips. So we're gonna start and end in this pose this evening, and this pose is called Sukhasana. I'm sitting in a variation called Sikhasana where the heels are lined up. This does take quite a bit of hip mobility. So sitting simply with your calves or your shins crossed and your feet under your knees is a welcomed variation for this pose. So please come to any seated variation that works for you. The other option is gonna to be to sit in a chair as well and have your feet flat on the floor. And if you're in a chair, I would like you to come to the very front edge of the chair. So you use the front edge of the chair as a prop to slightly tip your pelvis forward with your feet flat on the floor. So let's find a comfortable sitting position. And as we always do in gentle somatic yoga, we're gonna do a body scan. And I'm going to also use my singing bowl this evening. And I have a set of singing bowls that are tuned to the seven chakras. And this is the singing bowl that correlates to Svadhisthana chakra, which is the chakra of the pelvis. And this chakra is related to emotions. So sometimes when we go through an emotional episode in our life, we can also feel instability and perhaps pain in the SI joints and the low back. So finding your comfortable seat, you can rest your hands on the thighs or knees and close the eyes. If it's not comfortable for you to close the eyes, you can keep the eyes open, the eyelids soft, and just pick a point past the tip of the nose on the floor. We call this Nasab with the shoe. So finding a point past the tip of the nose to focus the eyes and therefore draw your awareness internally. We call this interoception. So beginning to sense and feel what's going on inside of the body for you, right in this moment. So you might just simply notice the energy in the body. Are you feeling enlivened and excited? Are you feeling tired, having stagnant energy? Take some deep breaths. And perhaps it helps to express your energy in an audible sigh this evening, or since you're practicing from the comfort of your home, any noise that you're drawn to make. <sighs> Uh, and since we're working with the pelvis this evening, notice any sensations around the pelvis. Notice perhaps the weight in your right sit bone compared to your left sit bone. And then I invite you to imagine your ears are like two big megaphones. And simply notice any sounds that are in your environment this evening. And then allow yourself to take in the sounds that correlate to Svadhisthana Chakra. One more breath to scan the body, the pre-check before practice. Mm. 
And then I invite you to come to lie on your back. And I practice on a yoga rug because it allows me to have a really smooth surface to slide and glide around on. And it's just on top of the yoga mat. So I have a little bit of support here. So the beautiful thing about uh, yoga, and especially this practice of gentle somatic yoga, is you don't need the yoga mat. You can be on your floor at home, your wood floor, or a carpet. I'm just going to put my prop to the side. So we will use it later. So have it nearby, but not impeding your practice space. So I invite you to lie down and ladies or gents, if you have hair that is bound, I also invite you to take your hair out and just run your fingers through your hair. So there's no tension on your scalp. And then come to lie down on your back, palms facing the sky. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out, and then without fidgeting or adjusting your body, let's do another sun scan and notice how the body is making contact with the floor this evening. So we could bring in different areas of focus, but tonight I want you to once again focus on the pelvis. Just notice, does it feel like one hip sits higher off the floor than the other? Any sensations, impression, pain that you might feel? Any pain, sensations radiating outward or upward? And also notice how the shoulders and neck feel because although we're going to be working on mobilizing the pelvis, there will be a ripple effect of the spine all the way to the head. And from here, bend the knees and have the feet about the hip apart and not too close to the pelvis. So I could walk my feet in pretty close here, which will actually end up moving my pelvis into more of a posterior tilt. I'm going to bring the feet a little bit away, reducing any tension in the hamstrings and also allowing my pelvis to be in a more neutral position. Tonight, I'm going to invite you to bring your arms into that cactus position. It is evening here in West Virginia. You might not be practicing in the evening wherever you are. If it's uncomfortable for you to have your arm in this position, you could have your arms out in a T position or even down at about 45 degrees. From here, let's come into our breath. So slow, deep breath in. And slow breath out. Two more like that. Breathe in through the nose if possible. And out through the nose. Or sometimes the mouth allows us to release energy. You might even bring in a sigh or any sound. And then once again, inhale. And with your exhale, flatten the small of the back. So the lumbar spine into the floor, into the earth. Give a little pressure through the feet. And then as you inhale, release that muscular activation and allow the pelvis to return to neutral. On your exhale, flatten the lumbar spine, gently press through the feet. And on the inhale, allow the spine to return to its neutral position. So no activation through the abdomen, no pressure through the feet. Breath in here again. Exhale, flatten the low back. You feel the muscles on the front of the 
body through the abdomen engage. And now as you inhale, release the abdominal muscles and begin to tip the pelvis forward, creating an arch under the low back. Notice how the pressure in the feet gets very light. And then as you exhale, press through the feet, beginning to flatten your back. And you could bring in that visualization of a bowl. So as we flatten the back, the water is tipping back towards the middle. And as we inhale and arch the low back, the water is tipping towards the pubic bone. And continue with your movement and ideally with the breath, but overall, don't hold your breath. So if you get confused with the breathing, just remember to breathe. As you move through this arch and flatten, please do not move into pain or strain. So if you notice pain, gently back off. And find the range of motion for you where you do not feel any pain or strain. And then pause and let everything go. And let's take our legs straight and lower the arms, coming back to that position of Shavasana, position of resting and releasing. And notice the residue, what remains after that simple movement. I often tell people if there's one thing you can remember from my classes, it is the arch and flatten or I often call it the spinal undulation. So we're creating this wave of movement up and down the spine by initiating the movement in the pelvis. If you have that block or cushion nearby, go ahead and take it. And as you bend your knees, we're going to place that cushion right between the knees. So between the knees, not so much between the thighs. And now as we exhale and flatten the back, coming back to arch and flatten, we're gonna squeeze that prop. And you may feel a little bit more engagement through your inner thighs. This is creating a lot of strength and stability in our pelvis. As you inhale, continue to hold that prop, but arch your low back. So don't let the prop drop, but do not squeeze it. And then exhale and squeeze that block or cushion. You could also fold a pillow in half or use a firm, Throw a pillow from your home. And as you inhale, release. Many of us have very strong outer thighs and abductors, but weaker inner thighs. And so this helps to create more balance between the muscles of the inner and outer leg. Let's just do a couple more of these. Inhale to arch the low back. Again, you're holding the thought, but not squeezing it. And then exhale and press your feet and squeeze. Now pause here with that flat knee of the back and then feel the tailbone lift up. So the pelvis is floating just an inch or you could slide your hand under your hips, just a little bit off the floor. You feel the weight come to your ribs. And then slowly using that muscular action, slowly lower the pelvis to the floor. It's often that people hold the block because it gives them a little bit of stability and it keeps the knees in alignment with the hips. But you could also set it to the side if for some reason it doesn't feel comfortable for you. We're gonna keep the arms in this cactus position. We're gonna do a few more of those. So inhale, arching. Notice the space and the breath, and you may have noticed the head gets pulled towards the chest, lengthening the neck. As you exhale, flatten the back. Pause, put the breath in, and then float the pelvis and bring the pelvis up one, two more inches. And then see if you can lower vertebrae by vertebrae with the exhale. Pause. The pelvis finally to neutral. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale to flatten. Notice how the head will get pushed away from the tailbone. And then with your next inhale, lift the pelvis, hover, bring the pelvis up a little bit higher. So now you're resting 
on the upper back, upper ribs. And as you exhale, see if you can press vertebrae by vertebrae, or like ribs, one at a time down. Feel the engagement through the belly. Press through the lumbar spine, and then release, pause. Inhale, and exhale. Let go of all muscular action. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, arch. Exhale, flatten. Pelvis beads on the necklace in GS5. And on the inhale, lifting the hips up. Think about vertebrae by vertebrae. Keeping the knees aligned with the hips. Equal feet, equal pressure on the feet, inner and outer foot. And then lowering slowly with the breath. Keep the breath moving. And then pause. Inhale. Arch. And exhale. Release. Mm. And then we're going to bring in a little bit of wiggling. I call this the edge of sketch. And just let your pelvis wiggle side to side. Feel your spine moving in this wave like motion side to side. You can. Rock your feet in and out. Without lifting your body up off the floor, any sort of shaking movements that feel good, just to release any residual tension. Take a big breath in. Side out. Notice how you feel. Mm. Once again, we're gonna bend the knees, feet are flat. This time, take your hands and feel your two hip bones. These, these points on the pelvis are called the anterior, meaning the front, superior, meaning the upper, iliac spine. So we actually have a, a lower point as well, but it's really covered by a lot of flesh and connective tissue. You can feel it on some pelvi, but those, Upper superior bones are really obvious. And so place your hands on those. And then with this one, we're going to think about hiking our hip up. So with your next inhale, feel your right hip hike up and your right ribs moving towards the right hip. Notice any sensations here. Remember to back off if it feels too intense or painful. And then as you exhale, pause. This is a very small movement. Next inhale, hike the left hip up. You'll feel the right hip slide downward. And then exhale to pause. I like to place my middle finger and pointer finger on the hip bone and my thumb on my lower ribs so I can sense the space on the lateral side of the body. Inhale, right hip moves towards right ribs. So the lateral side body will shorten on the right and lengthen on the left. Exhale to pause. Inhale, hike the left hip up, breathing in, and exhale to pause. It's a very small movement, but for many people I work with, there's a lot of sensation, not only in that SI joint area, the low back, but also sometimes in the abdomen as well. So just one more time on each side, make sure in case. Engaging muscles in the side of the body, pausing and releasing. Engaging on the other side. And then pausing and releasing. Okay. Keep the feet here. And we're going to move into our last reclined movement, which is called around the clock. So you could think about a clock laying on your belly, or you could also bring in that visualization of the singing bowl once again. So if I was holding a singing bowl right over my belly, as I inhale and arch my back, the water is going to tip towards my pubic bone. And as I exhale and flatten my back, the water is going to tip towards my navel. Back to neutral position, pause. And then 
press through your left foot and feel the weight tip towards your right hip bone as if you're pouring the water over the right lip of the bowl. And then pause, come back to neutral. And then press through your right foot so you send weight into your left hip, left SI joint. Water will spill over the left lip of the bowl. And then come back to neutral. And now imagine you're holding that ball and you're going to swirl the water around in the bowl. So let's arch. Press to the left foot to send the weight over towards the right hip, SI joint. Press through both feet, flattening the back. Press a little bit more through the right foot, sending the weight over towards the left hip, and then coming back to that arch position. Now see if you can move slowly and notice any points where there is some skipping or disengagement or you feel like you can't quite get the muscles to fire. And it might help to reverse your movement and just go over that a couple of times. Sensing the muscles that are needed to complete the movement and remembering to always practice without judgment. This is a practice of exploration and experimentation to create expansion. Mm -hmm. We have expansion for our body, for our spirit, for our mind. Now see if you can reverse that direction. And remember that you're in control. You can keep the hands on the hips and belly if it helps you, or you can release them to the sides. Just keep moving. And see if you can go a little bit slower and notice what happens to the neck and the chin as you do this. Maybe even through the shoulders. And find a place that feels sticky. If you can't quite maybe make that smooth movement, and see if you can go over that, tracing it a couple times. Maybe moving in and out, feathering in and out. I love to feel the way my oblique muscles and my core muscles are working to complete this movement. And then let's flatten the back one final time. Bring the feet in and just squeeze the knees together. And then release everything, slide the legs out. Do a little wiggle. Big inhale through the nose, squeeze all the muscles in the body. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And exhale, release. You could do that another time if it felt really delicious and good for the body. Feel a nice tingling and wavy throughout my body. So notice what it feels like for you after that short series of pelvic mobility. Notice the relationship of the two ilia, the two halves of the pelvis and the floor. If one hip was sitting higher, this would feel more balanced left to right now. Maybe one hip felt like it was hiked up. What's that like for you in your body? And then an overall sense of your energy. And then from here, bend the knees, pause, mm. roll to either side, and rest in fetal position. You could either use your prop or your arm to support your head. Mm. Feeling the innocence of this pose. And then with your top arm pressing the hand into the ground, extending the top leg, come up really slowly. Mm. 
friends. Find your sitting position once again. So come up onto that prop block or cushion. And find the same position you chose to start the class in. Notice the pressure of the sit bones into the floor of the block or the cushion. Notice any sensations in the pelvis or the back, perhaps remembering how it felt at the beginning of class compared to now. The practice of yoga is all of, is about coming back to ourselves and remembering the essence of who we are beyond the cloak of the physical body, beyond the maya, the veil of the breath and the mental afflictions. So the breath, moving into the nostrils, the ribs expanding, belly expanding. As you exhale, bring the hands to the heart center. Base of the thumbs resting at the base of the sternum, bowing the head to the hands and the heart. Honoring this beautiful, simple practice. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste.